let's talk about hit points. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about on the various websites, various uh, YouTube videos have something to say about hit points. What am I going to possibly add to the conversation? Maybe not a whole lot, but I figured I should uh, weigh in on the topic here on my channel. And hey, it's my channel, so I'll talk about hit points if I want to. So hit points. Um, I think it was the early 90s. I was playing a shadow run game. And one of the other players uh, asked, what's a hit point? You know, you know, I just got shot, right? Why am I still able to get up and run? Shouldn't I you know, be like laying on the ground? Shouldn't I be you know, injured? And uh, the person running the game at the time was like, well, you know, you're uh, wearing this leather coat. So that helped you somehow. And he's like, but I got shot. So that doesn't make any sense. And of course, in Shadowrun and uh, Dungeons and Dragons and every other RPG out there, the hit points are extracted or the um, life points or whatever the system might call for. You have these, these, these abstractions known as hit points. And uh, it can be an interesting, um, albeit uh, difficult to understand abstraction at times, um, especially when you look at some of the later materials. For example, you look at 5th edition. They just say, yeah, hit points, they exist, yay. Um, second edition doesn't do a whole lot better job, actually, in talking about what hit points are for the game. They, they, they do do a little bit better job, but they're not the best job. What I really like is the um, first edition, Dungeon Master's Guide, where hit points are discussed. And there's a great section in in here on hit points. And... Uh, and in here, it's hit, hit points. Just aren't you know you got stabbed. It's not you got you got punched. You got you you might have gotten grazed. You may have um, gotten a cut. You may have gotten you know a bruise. It doesn't always mean that you got stabbed through the heart. Um, as you go up in level, you can't get stabbed through the heart five or six times and be fine. Uh, if you go as you go up in level, you might gain you know some some hit points but uh um, you just don't keep um getting stronger and stronger and stronger and able to withstand the, all these all these uh greater and beater and uh bigger beatings um it just got, it kind of talks in here about how you uh gain more basically more skill and more knowledge you're able to easier sidestep stuff you're more able to um, get out of the way when something major happens and uh, which is kind of the cool thing about that is you are, you know, as you gain more tr training and more skill, you know, something would, that might have hit you uh, in the, in, in a, when you were a lower level, all of a sudden you have this more skill or more ability to kind of more luck, more divine inner intervention, whatever the case might be, so... So you might have this divine intervention or some other thing that is helping you uh, be stronger and more able to to withstand some of the damage. Um, so one thing that the first edition Dungeons Dungeon Master's Guide does is it actually discusses zero hit points and how when you go to zero hit points, you don't actually die outright. Uh, second edition, you do do you actually will die outright. Um, if you go to zero hit points, the character is slain. The character is immediately dead and unable to do anything unless specially specialized magical effects takes precedence. Of course, there's the optional death's door, um, hovering on death's door, but uh, without that optional rule, you are dead. Whereas in first edition, if you go to zero hit points, or even as low as negative three hit points on that hit. So you just didn't go, didn't go straight to zero. You actually took a little bit more damage and went to a negative three. Then uh, you actually have a chance to um, for somebody to get over there to help you out, to bind your wounds, to do some kind of a first aid type thing. And they'll have to spend their whole turn uh, doing that, that uh, round. But... Um, they're able to actually help you. Um, and if you're brought to zero or fewer hit points and then revived, uh, you actually stay in a coma for one to six turns. And then you have to rest a full week minimum. Now, that's something that uh, in my 
1e game that i'm running my players once again 5e players most of them were like okay i'm back at uh, i've got i've got some hit points back let's get back into it and I'm like no you're 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 not doing anything for a week um because you were you were hit hard you were damaged and uh you're incapable of activity other than you know the that basic necessity that you have to do maybe to move you can go to the bathroom you can eat you can uh sit up <laughs> uh, most of the time you just want to lay around because you took s serious damage you were laid out on on death's door to use that that uh, second edition term and uh, and then even in, in first edition if you get to that negative six you can actually uh, get permanently disfigured um bah. In, in in the example, a fireball might give you permanent scars on your exposed flesh. Um, maybe you lost part of some of your fingers. You know, maybe you actually have some real longer lasting injury and damage from that. Whereas once again in second edition, it is uh, you're just outright dead unless you use the uh, hovering on death's door, which is really similar to the first edition rule. Uh, basically, you hop, you drop to zero um, or below zero. Then you have the, until you reach negative ten. Then uh, you, you, there's a chance someone can help you. Uh, the other thing about uh, the second edition rule that I that I like is the death from massive damage. If you get hit, uh, one single source does fifty damage to you. You have to do a, a saving throw versus death, or you die. Saving throw versus death, or you die. It's that's that simple. 50 points of damage or more, save versus death, or, or you're, if you fail it, character's done. Um, dragon blows or breathes on you, that fireball from a high-level wizard, whatever the case might be, that, that might finish you. Um, even if you still have plenty of hit points left. So it doesn't just go to zero, it's that just... Because it's such a shock that you got hit for all of that damage. This is definitely a little more realistic, the uh, hit points. Um, and uh, even though they were still abstracted, the hit points and the whatnot for first and second edition. Compare that now to fifth edition, where by the time you reach, I don't know, third level, you're pretty much invincible. Um, you have... Uh, Death saves. Uh, you, if you go to to uh, zero or less, you're just, you're just unconscious. You roll a natural twenty. You pop up with a hit point ready to go. There's no lingering effects. There's no um, have to take some time because you were just unconscious. You know, if you've ever been hit in the head, um, maybe knocked out. When you come to, you just don't jump up and start running. I mean, when you wake up in the morning, you probably don't jump up and just start running takes you a couple of seconds to get orientated. Well, this is for a person who's been in combat, got hit in the head, got knocked out, and all of a sudden they jump up and they're casting spells. They're swinging their sword. Uh, first edition, at least, they lost their spells. Uh, if they got knocked unconscious, even if they did somehow get them back up with a, some kind of a heal spell, um, they had still lost their, their, their spells. So first, fifth edition, you know, a little more of a superhero. It's more of that uh, um, jump up and away you go. Maybe you spend uh, spend your inspiration point, or if you're using the optional hero points, you just uh, run to take a big couple swings with the big bad Tarask, and boom, down it goes, and you win. Yay. I actually ran some sessions once. Just a one-shot one type deal, beat the Tarask, uh had a whole bunch of different players kind of go through the scenario. It was a pretty much just the Tarrasque uh, gets awakened. Your group is the only ones nearby to go defeat it. They all rushed out. You know, they would rush out. And the Tarrasque got beat by all but... See, I ran five groups. Tarrasque got beat four times. Um, Yeah, the Tarrasque got beat four times easily. I mean, it wasn't even a super hard fight. I mean, these were high-level um, characters, but it was a balanced encounter for fifth per fifth edition rules. And uh, so if you'd have used me using something like uh, some of these first edition rules, it definitely would have not worked. The Tarrasque, uh, you know, and when it does, it's big, huge. 
attack and does all that damage, um, they would have killed outright, or they would have failed, had to make a death save. Uh, they may have been killed outright. They may have been knocked unconscious and been pretty much out of the uh, out of the battle for um, the uh, rest of the battle at at least. So, so yeah, that's just kind of my uh, take on hit points. There, um, hit points are not just you got stabbed in the heart ten times. It's more of you uh, got cut, you got sliced, you got bruised uh, with some near misses. Um, all that kind of comes into play there. Uh, and it's not quite a, a, uh, a something that you can just spend like in the 5th edition. 5th edition is very um, heroic, we'll say. And uh, the earlier 1st edition, 2nd edition is much more grim as far as that part of it's concerned. You're, you're definitely more thoughtful about what you're doing. Um, as a player, you're not just going to run in an attack. You know, there's a very good chance your character is not going to make it out of that combat. And... Um, like I said, the uh, first edition game I was running there, the players, the t couple of them that did go down, um, then by the rules, they were, um, the, their allies were able to help them. So then they were able to get back up and they spent that week just recuperating. And the players found that to be very uh, different. And uh, they were like, okay, well, we're just kind of coming along um, for the ride, basically. And uh, they were on a boat. Uh, it was back when they were still doing the naval part of the com of the campaign, and basically they just they weren't allowed to row, they weren't allowed to do watch, they weren't allowed to do anything. He said pretty much just sit there, and uh, and just be on that boat while the other characters kind of kept things going for him. And uh, we had a couple of small um, encounters, and they avoided them. And uh, so then the, the week went by and then they were okay again, but neither one of them had had uh, the lingering effects. So, so yeah, just a quick little take there on hit points and what they all can mean. Um, and they've been definitely an important part of all role-playing games uh, back from the beginning. So, um, yeah, if you got, uh, I'd love to hear your impressions on hit points and how they work out in your game and uh, leave a comment below and uh, yeah, make sure to hit the bell icon, like, subscribe and all that fun stuff. Thanks. Bye.